Hello, nice to have you back on Art for Everybody. My name is Evi Steiner Böhm, I'm an artist from Germany, and my two little friends here are called Pedro and Rosa, and they sometimes help me in my videos to explain things. To me as a beginner, landscapes were really, really frustrating because there were so many details I wanted to paint and I never succeeded, so I really was about to give up landscape painting until my teacher told me to concentrate on this one rule he gave me. And that really helped me to focus and so I slowly got better and better. And this rule he told me, I would like to explain to you in this video. Now before I'm going to paint a landscape for you, I would like to explain this very simple rule for landscape painting. And it says, in landscape painting, if you go from the foreground to the background, colors get paler and bluer. And this paler and bluer includes a couple of things which I would like to point out first. Now, if we look at paler and we look in the background, we can see that these colors here are very desaturated. There's a lot of white in it and also the contrast between light and dark is very weak and the forms are barely visible. You can guess that this could be trees, but you, can, but you cannot be sure. Now, if you go to the foreground, you can see that this part here is already more saturated. You still have a lot of white and you can guess the forms better. And if you go even further into the foreground, you can see that you have very saturated colors with very little white in them and you have a very strong contrast between light and dark. You have almost blacks here and very light yellows here and you can clearly see the forms. You can clearly see that these are trees or bushes and you can see the trunks or maybe even the branches. And the same goes for the sky, of course. If you look here to the sky, which is very, very far away from you, you have a very desaturated color, a very light blue. And the further up you go, the warmer the blue gets. Blue, mind you, is a cold color, of course, but it can still be a warm blue. And I will explain the colors in a minute. Okay, the same here, if you have meadows or wheat fields or whatever, you can see that in the background you have desaturated colors. The colors get more saturated and the forms get more distinct and you have strong contrasts between light and dark. And the same goes for the clouds, of course. In the background, you have very desaturated colors again, a very light gray, which is almost invisible. And it gets more vivid here and even more saturated here. And as for bluer, this is, of course, um, referring to the colors you have to choose. Um, in the background, we use cold colors. We use more blues and cold greens. And the further we go to the foreground, the warmer the colors get. And this means we use more yellows and reds or warm greens. So now let's have a look at the colors I'm going to use to accomplish all these things I've just explained. Um, I have used ultramarine blue for this part. And I added a little crimson and, of course, titanium white. And the further down I go, the bluer I get, meaning the cooler I get. And this means I use ultramarine blue with more titanium white. And from here on, I add cyan to my ultramarine blue. If you don't have cyan, you can also use phalo blue 
or Prussian blue or Parisian blue, some cool blue you've got, and more titanium white. And here it's only cyan and titanium white, and here it's only white. And if you want a really sunny, bright day, you can even add a little lemon yellow or yellow ochre to your white and you get a really bright horizon where you have the feeling that the sun reflects there. Okay, let's have a look at the clouds. If you have clouds, you of course need a very strong contrast here. And I mix the dark parts of my clouds always from the colors I use down in the landscape so that the colors of my landscape harmonize with the colors of my clouds. So I use ultramarine blue, crimson and cadmium yellow for the dark of my clouds. And of course, that makes it easier to change the colors of my, my clouds, making them more greenish or more bluish or whatever I like. And for the white part of my clouds, I use titanium white and cadmium yellow or crimson. Okay, and for my landscape down here, for the hills or the forests or the trees and the bushes that I'm going to, pa to paint, I use cyan and burnt sienna and titanium white for the faraway hills. And for the forests in the middle ground, I add ultramarine blue to my cyan and lemon yellow and maybe a little burnt sienna or maybe sometimes a little cadmium yellow. This is very intuitive and you always have to check whether it harmonizes with the rest of your painting. And the further I get into the foreground, the more ultramarine blue I use and cadmium yellow I use. And for the very dark parts, I use ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And last but not least, the meadows or the fields that you see. For the faraway uh, meadows, I use lemon yellow and cyan and titanium white. Um, for the middle ground, I add cadmium yellow to my cyan and maybe ultramarine blue and still titanium white. And the further I come into the foreground, the more cadmium yellow I use um, and very little white. And for the darks, again, I use burnt sienna with ultramarine blue. The colors I've just shown you are if you want to paint a summer landscape. If you want to have a spring landscape or autumn landscape, you can, of course, change the colors. For example, you could use yellow ochre instead of lemon yellow because the colors get a lot darker then. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you what happens if you use yellow ochre, for example, and you will see that even one color can make a real difference in the outcome. And now I'm going to show you how I paint the landscape. Since I paint in an impressionistic style, I'm going to use bristle brushes. But if you want a smoother result, please feel free to use soft synthetic brushes because with them you can get really, really soft transitions. I don't do that. I'm quite content with my style. Okay, I've already prepared the composition and composition wise, I always try to go with the golden ratio. I have almost two thirds on my painting for the sky and a little more than one third for the landscape. You could do it the other way around, of course, if you want more landscape. And the same here, I've tried to have almost two thirds on this side with the forest and the same here. I've already shown you the colors that I'm going to use and how I want to paint the clouds. Okay, and from now on, I'm just let you going to watch how I do the painting. And when I'm finished, we're going to look at the result together.
So this is my finished painting following this easy rule. Now, as you could clearly see, I did this painting on a white surface. And in preparation for this video, I did another one using a dark surface. And I would like to show you the difference. These are exactly the same colors as I used here. But this painting already looks more dull, not quite as vibrant as this one. And I would like to show you yet another painting, which I did last year for my German YouTube channel. And I did that in oils. And here I used yellow ochre instead of lemon yellow. And this makes the painting look a lot more like autumn than this one. So you can see one different color makes a real, real difference. So this is something I would really recommend to you if you're a beginner. Try to experiment with all kinds of things, with the colors, with the surfaces, because that's something I know from experience that you have to find your own way. And only then you can do paintings which are honest and honest paintings always are the most successful ones. And that was all I wanted to tell you about landscape painting for today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I surely hope that you will join me again for the next lesson. Until then, have a very good time and see you soon.